Now, as you follow this dotted line along, which I said is the edge of the footing underneath the top of the slab, and we'll, give, we'll show you a section that'll give you a clearer picture as to what's going on. You'll see this particular section right here, 1S2. This is a uh, detail. It's detail number one on sheet S2. And it's going to cut through the edge of the slab. And it's going to look this way. It's going to look from right to left as we cut through it. So what I'm going to do now is try to give you a split screen here. So we can see um, both of these together. Okay, and you can get a better idea about about what's going on. Let me collapse these layers. Okay, so what you have here is this is detail number one on sheet S2, detail one sheet S2. We're cutting through it. We're looking from right to left. So this very dark line I told you is the edge of the slab. That represents this right here, the edge of the slab where the dirt backs up against it. Okay, um, right here it says column footing beyond. This is the F3 footing right here that's down a little bit. You know, we're not really cutting through it at this point, but we see it down here a little bit. So they've chosen to go ahead and uh, dash that in like it would be beyond our line of vision. It's hidden from us, but it's back there. So that's the footing underneath the column. And then this area between the dark line and the dash line is this width right here, one foot four. So we have this continuous footing running underneath the whole edge of the slab all the way around the perimeter. And then every once in a while it'll intersect where these uh, spot footings are with the columns coming down. And we'll look at a, a one of those in just a second. But this dash line represents this point right here, the width of this footing. Most of the time, the dash line you see is going to represent wherever the dimension is given. So in this case, it's one foot four. So this point, one foot four from the outside edge, would be the same. This should be one foot four in width right here. We don't show this upper one. It's just too confusing. It's not really a need for that. Um, <clears throat> but inside of this detail, you can see not only are we given the width, we know this is the outside edge of the slab. This is the dash line showing the width of this footing running all the way around the perimeter. This is the spot footing beyond. So it's this spot footing that's out of our field of view right now. Uh, but we're also given a lot of other information. How deep is this uh, continuous footing along the outside? Well, it's one foot six from the top of the slab down to the bottom of this footing. And the top of the slab can be a maximum of six inches from the top of the earth or the finished grade. Okay, this would be the finished grade, exterior grade, but it can no, be no higher than six inches above that. Uh, it's going to give us information about the rebar, where the rebar is placed. There's two number five continuous rebars running through here. There has to be three inches of space between the outside edge horizontally and three inches from the bottom up. So this has to be a minimum of three over and three up. Same way over here. It's got to be covered by concrete. But all that has to be noted. Um, <clears throat> this is actually noting where there's a metal wall panel on the outside coming down to rest on the uh, outside edge of the slab where the column is going to be further down. This one right over here. And it's also going to tell about this little uh, item right here which is actually embedded in the concrete before it dries it is an angle it's a steel angle a two by two by quarter inch thick steel angle again hopefully you remember that from construction materials and it's going to have a half inch diameter six inch stud this is a six inch long half inch diameter stud welded to the back of it and that's what's anchoring this thing into the concrete and this little metal angle is where the siding rests it kind of sits down right there on top of it Okay, and it tells you how far do you want to space them. They should be at every 24 inch increment. So at 24 inches on center maximum. So at every 24 inches on center from point A to point B, you need one of those. <clears throat> and then this SOG slab on grade, it just says C plan for typical info. On the plan over here, it gives information about the slab. Um, so that's a general detail uh, about what we're what we're looking at over here on the on the left side. Um, again, you have your footing marks. We talked about those. <clears throat> again, if you follow these grids, 
all these columns <clears throat> right here on the outside you'll see this one let me zoom in on that these grids uh, can vary you can see this one says A going to this one which is actually the outside edge of the slab but it's also the face of this column and this column so these fall on the face of grid line A well this is A.1 okay it's just the first increment it's what they chose to call it and usually the points come from the distance between where A is versus B so this is really close to A so they're going to call it A.1 you can see this one right over here is a little over halfway between B and C so they chose to call it B.6 because it's a little over halfway 0.5 would be halfway um, so that's how they're choosing to name them and different people do it different ways but that's pretty typical um, but as you work your way down you can see this column grid line right here it lines up misses those because they're lined up out here on the face of A but A.1 uh, keeps coming down <clears throat> and it kind of brushes center line of this column and you can see this one does not go through the center line of this column because this outside face of it is lined up with A out here those are the types of things you just gotta be able to see it and understand if this is not going through the center point of this column then it has nothing to do with it this column here is associated with this column grid line A which lines up with the edge of the slab so the face of this column right here would line up with the edge of the slab Okay has nothing to do with this one because it does not hit center it's just a visual thing if you can tell it doesn't hit center then it's not going to hit center and it has nothing to do with that grid this grid line 8.1 if you follow it down it really has nothing to do with any of the interior columns it's only these two on the exterior it's this one and then the one on the far end and you can see right down here it's going to say 8.1 again so you have to be a little bit careful and that's one of those areas where it's just getting used to reading them if the face lines up and it looks like it lines up, it's associated with that grid line. Obviously, it's not hitting the center here, so we're not worried about it. It's not associated with it at all. Um, if you go down the right side, you'll see these are numbers. 1, 1.3, 1.7, 2, 3. Across the top, most of the time, the horizontal, you're going to have letters. Vertically, you're going to have numbers. Okay? Uh, that's generally how it's going to go. Again, sometimes there's variation, but a lot of times uh, that's that's how you're going to see it. <clears throat> and you can see there's a lot of details. This one's actually cutting through the footing at the column. Um, there's another one down here doing the same thing. And if they are repeated, that's fine. The reason there's two different ones here is that this one, the column is set, you can tell. two things one this is appears to be a bigger column and because it's bigger it's set a little bit different uh, than the other one and so anytime there's a different situation uh, you're gonna have a detail for that this is a detail of this uh, joint running through the middle um, have two different details here and you just have to go look at them to see what's what they're showing is different. You know, this is one which we've already looked at. This is four, which is also duplicated. If you see one like this, that says sim on it, that is that it, you should reference detail five on S2, and it's similar to it. It may not look exactly the same. In this case, probably what happens is it's mirrored. This one is supposed to be looking down from the top, which would put the edge of the slab on your right hand side. Um, so if I go to 5, there it is, and it, that is correct, okay? Um, and so they're just saying that, hey, it's, it's similar to 5, so you're going to pick out what you need. In this case, what they've done is they've shown how they want the footing to be built when it's the column's coming down and sitting right on top of this footing, the spread footing or this uh, spot footing. In this case, the actual continuous footing that's running all along the outside here <clears throat> when it hits this it grows it gets thicker and it goes all the way out to the edge of the spot footing and then this dash line in the back shows the one we looked at previously up here in detail one where it's only I think it was one foot four inches wide 
yeah, one foot and four inches wide right here. But then when it gets to the spot footing, it gets bigger and goes all the way out to the edge. So that's what that dash line is representing is the other continuous footing in the background running away from us. Um, but that is a brief rundown of this particular uh, set of plans. One thing uh, you will notice it's a little different is this has this wall right here running through it. That's a CMU wall. Uh, and if you go to one of these details, let's see which one that is. Um, that would be that would be detail number three uh, on S2, I believe. I'm sorry, detail two on S2. So I'm going to find detail two real quick right here. And you can see it's a little bit more involved than what that other one was. It's actually showing you this front walkway, which is where the uh, walk, uh, the exterior sidewalk would be. This is the front wall of the building right here. So this is the CMU wall, and that CMU wall is coming all the way down and hitting this footing on the outside. The slab's going to end here. The slab's going to start here and slope down and have this different footing out here. So you have to be careful and you have to look at all of these. And again, most of this uh, is very simply done. It's just CMU wall, big spot footing right there. And all these dash lines are indicating that there is a footing beyond. So this is the larger footings or the footings that are happening beyond it to hold these columns over here in the background. So uh, you just got to get used to the lines. If it's dashed, it's behind, you know it's in the, it's out there behind the soil. We're looking forward into the footing that we've cut through. We're looking through the soil. This is what's happening beyond our field of view. This is what's happening, of course, right where we cut it. Anytime you see it filled in right here, that's concrete filled. That means I have this rebar, and it tells you what this is. It's dowels or rebar running down into the footing, connecting the CMU. And most of the time when this happens, uh, they will be filled with concrete to an extent to solidify that connection. But again, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. But uh, once you remember and understand the materials, um, how they're connecting, what all the notes mean, um, it, it will not be hard at all.